Every day, 15,000 Indians turn 60 and become senior citizens in a country that ranks the lowest out of 43 countries on the Natic 6 Global Retirement Index. India is currently home to about 140 million elderly. Low pensions, meagre savings and a lack of health insurance cover mean that they enter old age with great financial insecurity. There are 90 million elderly in India who are still working for a living. What's more concerning, one out of two Indians also enter old age with a chronic disease. Not surprising with every sixth diabetic in the world being an Indian. As the years go by, physical aging with unexpected onset of illnesses like dementia or Alzheimer's makes day-to-day -day living a nightmare. What makes it more terrifying is living alone. Believe it or not, three out of ten elderly in India live alone or with another senior citizen. Majority of them are women. In most cases, children would have left in search of a better livelihood, either to live in cities or even abroad. In fact, according to an Antara report, one out of two elderly face many mental health issues during the pandemic. You do not know what it's like to be lonely until you spend time alone wishing for companionship, said Ratan Tata recently. Companionship, community and consistent care is what they crave. The neglect on our part needs urgent addressal and it is being addressed with geriatric care evolving from just running errands for elders to engaging them online and offline with weekly events, reinvigorating their lives with dedicated residential communities and taking care of their health with assisted living and at home care. Hello and welcome to Young Turks, India's longest running show on startups and entrepreneurship. I'm Shireen Bhan. To talk about the importance of expanding the geriatric care space in India, I'm now joined by Tara Singh Bachani, the founder of Antara Senior Care, Somijit Roy, co founder of Imoha Elder Care, and Neil D'Souza, the co founder of Get Set Up. Tara, Somijit, and Neil, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18's Young Turks. You know, for years, we have talked about India's demographic advantage, India's demographic dividend. The focus has been on the young population, the young workforce. And somehow, uh, there hasn't been much attention on another very important aspect and reality that we need to deal with, and that is geriatric care. It's also a population that's getting older. And, uh, you know, three of you are perhaps a handful of entrepreneurs in India who are trying to address uh, this space the silver economy, the geriatric care economy. Tara, let me start by asking you, when you set up Antara Senior Living, and of course now Antara is also looking at assisted care services, wholly owned subsidiaries of Max India, what was the thought process from setting up your first residential, senior residential community in Derudun, uh, you know, with 180 apartments, you're now looking at setting up in Noida, uh, and that's almost double of what you started with in Derudun. What have been the challenges? Thank you for having me. It's nice to be the senior most of this panel. Uh, we've been at this for 10 years now, uh, slow and steady. And I think um, we're building this whole concept brick by brick sheeting because it is that serious and that important. And essentially, when we started 10 years ago, it was with a vision and Samajit on the panel was part of that dream uh, as part of the Antara team back then. So he knows what I'm referring to. But essentially, it was a dream to impact quality of life for the aging population. Um, up until us, I think we were sort of have been the lone wolves in this uh, for quite a while. But the idea was that can we find ecosystems, products and services that take the aging process of seniors to be efficient, progressive, joyful and happy. And therefore, in that journey, we started with the one residential community in Dehradun. And in 2019, we actually expanded to three brand new verticals other than the residences vertical. So not only are we expanding the residences vertical by putting a community in Noida and other parts of NCR and probably other parts of India by next year, but we decided we also had to take from lifestyle all the way up to life care. And the new verticals address essentially that. So there are care homes that deal with pre-op, post-op care, 24-7 medium or short-term care for seniors, home care, as well as medical products. And I think the biggest challenges for us have been three. One was really changing the mindset of both the primary and secondary audience to understand that investing in a quality of life as you get older is mission critical. Two, it's been influencing policy and government to understand and recognize this as a sector. And three has been probably the ability for people to pay because insurance ecosystems are not influencing senior care and senior spends. 
but we're seeing this shift and we're, we're seeing the narrative change. So it's very exciting at the moment. You know, I want to talk about the changes that you are seeing, Tara, in just a second. And yes, uh, uh, you know, uh, Somyajit and Tara did work together. In fact, Somyajit was part of uh, the founding team at Andara before he decided to set up Imoha Elder Care. Somyajit, let's talk about your journey and what you're attempting to do and address through Imoha Elder Care. No, Shireen, thank you. I think it's a it's an extra special privilege to be part of Tara's team and, and learn so much from a, a beautiful dream that you know, Antara got created. Uh, my journey in elder care started, uh, you know, about four or five years before that when I was heading the senior care vertical at Jones Lang LaSalle, um, helping a lot of uh, organizations think through their senior living strategy. Um, but I think it's it's more personal. I think it started with uh, my own mom, my own dad, uh, and seeing the struggles that India's elders face, uh, you know, over the years and how they're able to manage it from the comfort of their own home. Uh, and the word Imoha goes into exactly that, that uh, if you turn around the word Imoha, it's a home. And it's, it's, the, it's the acceptance that India's elders, unlike a lot that has happened in the world, would want to stay in their own home. 99% uh, of India's elders want to stay in their own home. That's what you want to go when you are not well or you're in a fancy house in Florida, you would finally want to go back to your own home. So how do we stitch you know, all the services that you would otherwise get in a beautiful uh, you know, facility, beautiful, uh, you know, continuing care retirement community worldwide. How can you deconstruct all those things and be able to stream it into your own home is what Imoha started to build towards. Uh, and therefore, whether it is emergency 24 by 7 support, where today we save more than 350 lives, or it is doing engagement and events using the Imoha app, uh, where we've done more than 3,000 programs now. The whole idea is that stay in your own home but benefit from the best of care, which is, you know, which is not compromised. So how do, we, how do we not reinvent the wheel? There is the nearby hospital, there's a nearby, uh, you know, the care ecosystem is there, but how can we have the digital world, the physical world married together, but a unique concept that we've created in Moha called Moha Daughters. Um, and, you know, with, uh, with daughters, there's a special privilege because 85% of world care needs happen by the daughter. So at Imoha, we've made the Imoha daughter the, you know, the fulcrum of care who hold the whole family together and stream in not just healthcare, but also social, emotional, uh, travel and other support systems into the elder zone. Uh, today we've got about 30,000 elders in, in, in across the country now, 80 cities and towns, where uh, elders are staying in their own home and benefiting from the services. But I think more importantly, Shireen, the th thing is about how does this, what seems as a challenge, come out as an opportunity, because that is really the, the thing between uh, the work that is being done across all large elder care companies in the country. The opportunity is to look at a 40,000, 50,000 crore market uh, where we can make uh, an impact and a difference in the quality of life, as Tara said. That is really the uh, driving factor. Yes, and that... Uh, absolutely. And that's what I want to dig a little deeper into uh, that, you know, what is that opportunity? And more importantly, what will be the different pieces of that opportunity? Because each of you are addressing different segments, different categories, different needs within that uh, uh, large market. Uh, in fact, Neil is doing something completely different from what Tara and you are doing, Swamiji. So let me get Neil into the conversation. Neil, talk to us about Get Set Up and what you're attempting to do. Yeah, thanks, Shireen. Um, so yeah, Get Set Up is, you know, just over two years old. And while I was looking at your introductory segment, I'm one of those kids who abandoned my parents in Goa and have moved to the U.S. And, you know, felt like, how do I take care of them so that they can live happy, healthy, productive lives as they are aging in? And what I realized is, you know, um, there are two categories, right? There's aging in, where people like my parents who are turning 60, 65, are so-called retired, but they are feeling active. They want to learn. They want to mm. meet new people. They want to follow their passions because they didn't have that opportunity growing up because of the Indian education system and, you know, how we grew up in our society. So I was like, what if we create a platform yeah. for them to pursue their hobbies and passion? And if they do that, it will increase their mental enrichment. It will increase their physical uh, health. It will also help them connect with new people, so reduce loneliness. 
but also yeah. they can come on the platform and teach and make some extra money and so really the problem that we were trying to solve was how do we help the 60 to 70 year old live longer so that their you know well insurance doesn't cover and our health system doesn't cover a lot of the challenges in elder care if we do something more preventative we can actually extend the aging process and also reduce the cost of care so that's kind of what get set up is it's it's a learning platform uh we have over 2 million people in india who have taken classes in the last 2 years and they do everything from yoga together they are doing uh discussion groups they are playing games online they are also doing things in person now where they are going to concerts and they are going on cruises so it's really uh allowing this generation to pursue their passions where they didn't have their opportunity and thus living healthy lives Uh, and more power to you and to the people who are actually uh, uh, you know taking up this challenge of reinventing themselves post retirement i mean you this idea of having to retire from life uh, it is passe i mean everyone's talking about how 60 is the new 30 or whatever the case may be and uh, and i think uh, you know we are living longer and we need to ensure that we do have fuller lives uh, uh, as we progress uh, and age and tara i want to come back to you now to address the issue of how do we replicate some of these models let's start by talking about yours uh, one of course is the assisted living model that you are now looking at and of course then you've got the senior uh, community senior living communities that you're setting up how do you make it accessible how do you make it more affordable what will need to change so that more people can avail of these services shreen i think first of all you know more people like somiji then neel need to join hands i mean i could think of three things that neel and 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 i and antara and get set up could do together and that in itself will have to have a multiplier effect so neel please expect a phone call from me after this um the the senior living with the residence is big we have been able to scale up by doing joint development models with land owners who understand that there is a premium financially for them if they partner with unique niche boutique concepts like us um, and the government's been you know supportive in creating policies around building norms and making it easier for us to create communities because the fact is that while the world is going digital and i believe in that as being a huge part of what any industry or category is the physical proximity of human beings to one another will continue to be the clincher in aging positively and well and that is why we believe at the fulcrum of everything we do some level of physical manifestation of spaces and ecosystems have to exist so i think the government coming in helping with land helping with policies land owners understanding the benefits of this category can really help scale up community living and then comes the services portion of it with time where you're able to just do things better with economies of scale and and practice the new verticals are asset light from an antara point of view and that actually then helps right you know um it it's um, transfer that in terms of pricing so if you look at the difference between um the price points that we have in a residential community versus some of the experiences and offers we have in the care home and care at home it is being able to address a much larger market we have been able to serve 10000 patients in our assisted care verticals in a year um because they are transactional and they're quick in need and they're lower in price point um and i think that just by entrepreneurs understanding that this is a huge market it's a 15 20 billion dollar market and it is going to get formalized i think more players will come in and government will support with policies and that's how we make it scalable and affordable but the truth is we can't be all things to all people and for that to happen it will take its time absolutely and i think uh, that's a valid point you cannot be all things to all people and hence you need uh, more uh, entrepreneurs uh, more players in this market trying to address different price points and different pain points as well so amijit you know uh, both of you tara neel and yourself you've all spoken about this being a 15 to 20 billion dollar market opportunity so somijit i want to understand from you are you now starting to see more investor interest coming in because all of these plans are also going to require uh, funding especially when we talk about scale so uh, you know is that starting 
starting to happen? Are you starting to see uh, investors buy into this story, into this opportunity? And secondly, we talked about demand, and that's very clear uh, from what each one of you has said. But on the supply side, especially when we talk about uh, appropriately trained manpower, etc., how challenging is that going to be to build scale? Oh, Shireen, I just uh, we just came out of a uh, pre series B round, uh, you know, about two months back, and uh, despite what was happening across the world, um, I think we feel very grateful and very privileged to our investors that we successfully closed it, and in fact, we got oversubscribed. We've now gone into a series B, so I've been interacting with a lot of investors in India and abroad, and I think the interest is very high because you know uh, the the world recognizes the need for solutions in the aged care segment. The world recognizes that this is probably the biggest blind spot, not just for the industry, but for also the tech industry. Uh, Imoha is extremely tech oriented. The back end is very tech heavy. Uh, there is a whole approach towards creating a digital first solution, but also a care first and an elders first solution. So investors get it. Investors understand that this is, you know, even if it is a 2000 rupees per customer ARPU, we are talking of a, you know, with just a million people on the app, uh, it's a you know 24,000 crore market. Uh, you know when you add uh, the full continuum of care within the Imoha platform, we now have the Epoch Care Homes uh, who, who operate at close to about $1,600 per month. So if you look at the full continuum, investors understand that this is a very large segment, exactly as some, as Tara, Tara mentioned about going to about a $15 billion opportunity. So investors understand it, but I think there is a little bit of a watch and wait that is happening, which is. Uh, in some ways going to you know uh, keep all the players in the industry there that you need to keep your focus you need to keep your eye on margins you need to keep your eyes on customer acquisition cost on how you are scaling it up and at every incremental zone how the whole uh, cost of expansion cost of delivery is becoming better um, so i think the global investor base as well as the india uh, investor base has started to show a lot of interest there are a lot of single hni investors who are putting in money which is a great indicator despite market conditions. I think the demand side is something that is seeing increasingly uh, 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 an opening up. So whether it is, uh, you know, different parts of the country where uh, individuals are recognizing that elder care cannot be any more, you know, a point which is ignored. Uh, a, a lot of blind spots in NRIs, for example, have opened up after the COVID period where they've realized that they can't afford to just have their parents vulnerable in, in some part of the country. Corporates, Insurance people, bank people have understood uh, who are now partnering with you know organizations like us that there is some part of the care play that we can have an active role. Uh, to your third point about supply, um, I think there is innovations that is at play. Again, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. There is possibilities for utilizing a lot of talent which is there in the neighborhood. Part of the talent could be the elder itself. We have elders from 55 going up till 75, 80 who are very active, who are talented, who have time. Uh, and exactly as Neil was mentioning in, in what Get Set Up is doing and brilliant work by Neil, uh, there is possibilities of many of such kind of people being brought into the fold of you know, routine employment for taking care of elders itself. So whether it's young people who are available, but maybe in, in alternate professions uh, as gig economy or it is elders, I think there's a full spectrum of uh, supply also available, which can be leveraged. It requires a lot of innovative deployment, uh, you know, with, with technology stitching the whole thing together. Yeah, I would imagine that uh, you need to bring uh, all stakeholders together uh, and really have that ecosystem impact. But Neil, uh, you know, you said you've been uh, in business now for the last two years. Uh, take me through what uh, the plans are now as far as expanding this offering is concerned, taking it to more people. Yeah, so, you know, we actually uh, started as a, in the U.S. just two years ago, but have scaled to India and several other markets. Um, what we're seeing very interesting, is, as we all know, is there are Indians living all over the world. We are such a big population. And so we're seeing the diaspora from all over the world actually come onto the platform and wanting to actually connect with their roots and do things with people. Um, so we are starting to now grow from online because our online offering has scaled quite a bit is to take that to the next level where people want to meet in person. Um, like my example, like my, my mom who is in Goa met some 50 strangers 
who she only met online on Get Set Up and flew to a Get Set Up concert with her singing teacher, right? And so we're seeing that desire that they connected online, but they want to do activities together and now go on holidays together with people they met. And so I think what we are doing at Get Set Up in India is actually expanding to actually follow what the customers want uh, because those were the opportunities they missed. And so we are doing offline events. We are leveraging, um, I think, underutilized assets. So if you think about coffee shops, you think about gyms that are running empty in the afternoons, like how do we take our online fitness classes and offer it in partnership with them in the physical world? Uh, uh, same with financial institutions that are, uh, they've realized that our platform has about 86% of women uh, who have traditionally been out of the financial literacy space. Like usually the husbands take care of all the finances, but we're seeing women on our platform being so inquisitive. So we're having banks and pension funds in India actually approach us to run more financial literacy programs, uh, funding some mm -hmm. businesses that are coming from these women. So it's very exciting to see the online community that was built uh, over the last two years and really taking it to the offline world to actually help them uh, accomplish some of the goals that they had as they're aging. Well, the next time you're organizing a concert, let me know, Neil. Uh, I, 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 w I would love to be part of that as well. But, uh, but Tara, I want to come back to you uh, and you know address the issue that Soumya and Neil both spoke about, building partnerships. And I would imagine that uh, you know, given the opportunity that you speak of, as well as the mindset change that uh, you alluded to at the start of the program, are you now starting to see this become something that Corporates, for instance, are, are thinking of as part of an incentive, as part of how they treat their uh, executives and so on and so forth. Or banks, you know, what, what's, what's the sort of ecosystem impact that you're seeing as you've seen mindsets change individually as well as at the enterprise level? No, definitely, Shirin. We're seeing, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing the whole investor space change hugely. And the minute the investor space starts changing, people in general start waking up to a sector. So that's been a great shift that we have also seen. Partnerships, of course, um, given that aging is so linked to healthcare to begin with, there are healthcare partnerships that are integral to the existence of any senior care offering. So we are seeing our partnership with healthcare partners deepening both ways because it's an audience that doesn't need to be hospitalized. And therefore, we're even seeing hospitals partner with us and say, take over some of the care and we'll do the clinical bits, which is something they are very good at. So that's a big partnership model that we're starting to see. Two corporates, I would say the conversations are starting. I haven't seen much translate. And it was a pool that we talked a lot to in the early days of Antara in Dehradun, but then we saw that the buying and the consumer behavior was very sort of end-to-end -end or B2C in that sense. But at some point, at least the care homes and the home care bit, the minute insurance starts linking up more strongly, corporates will have to start looking at this as somewhat retirement benefits. And I think the shift is on the anvil. Um, and lastly, banks, et cetera, I think given that so much of this 15 to $20 billion pool is in financial services, they are starting to change products around. And we're seeing that both insurance, uh, life insurance, ULIP plans, as well as traditional banking is starting to adjust slowly to understand that this consumer and, and demography needs special attention. I think we're a few years away from these partnerships actually taking shape. But I do see a lot of potential partnerships within people in the senior care space, like I already mentioned. And I think that will be very exciting for us um, and to see how the multiplier effect can kick in. So, Antara, uh, uh, Tara, what, what should we expect in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the next set of targets that you've uh, set for yourself? You talked about the NOIDA uh, community that's going to be up and running by 2025. Uh, what else is on the cards? Um, so we're actually getting into what I'm calling version 3.0 of Antara. Um, and there's a lot of scale up that we are envisioning because it's, it's a very exciting time for us. So when we look at our residences vertical, um, our second project is all, already well on its way to getting operationalized. We want to have at least five to seven more residential communities in the coming three to five years. In the vertical of care homes, we see ourselves going from 
a current 100 beds to about 2,000 beds and spreading outside of the NCR. Um, we want to continue to grow the home care business as almost an ancillary service to these. And we are actually in an exciting juncture where we're looking at other adjacent opportunities that can also help us scale up and you know, give us sort of the a, a fair amount and uplift in, in revenues now that we're being able to see the proof points of all of our business models. So we, we, we're, we're sort of at the start of a very exciting phase three, as we call it. Okay, so 3.0, that's the journey that you're starting. But uh, Swamijit, uh, you know, if I were to ask you for a wish list to leave us with, uh, we've all spoken about the opportunity that exists, but if there was a wish list in terms of the changes that you believe uh, need to be made, both at a policy level, uh, at the level of government intervention to enable and facilitate the growth of this space, uh, you know, anything in specific that you'd like to leave us with? Yeah, so I think the one uh, must definitely acknowledge the fact that the last two years, particularly, there's a lot of activity that has happened uh, by the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment. Uh, the current secretary has been extremely active, Subramanian, for making you know together a lot of policy changes. But I think the one policy um, shift that is very important is to be able to have uh, organizations which are in the senior care space, uh, you know, kind of uh, benefit from the kind of services they are able to do and pass on benefits to the end consumers, particularly in matters related to GST, um, you know, or how we can reduce the burden that they already have. Elders across the country, as we know, um, you know, they have, they, have, they have high assets, but low cash. They, they don't have a running income. So and adding to their expenditure is not a great idea. And therefore, being able to have, uh, you know, expenditure related benefits come to them by virtue of lower tax, or GST is something which is a very important aspect. Uh, two, I think from a policy standpoint, being able to help uh, you know, partnerships and able to help organizations who want to do public-private partnerships across the country, uh, whether it's in the form of senior living or uh, assets that you know, Tara talked about, I think it's a very important thing because across the country, there is a lot of uh, communities and assets which are there. If such kind of assets could be shared, it could be a massive advantage. Uh, we are, you know, doing a lot of programs now in Gurgaon where we are trying to see how Gurgaon can become pretty much like an elders first destination for the country. Uh, and these will require government and private sector to work very closely together. So recognizing that elders itself is a, is a large opportunity. They are an unutilized, uh, a great cohort that can benefit government and private sectors. I think these are small things that can play a, a big role uh, from a policy standpoint. Well, uh, Tara, Swamijit and Neil, thanks so much for joining us here on this special edition of Young Turks to talk about uh, the opportunities uh, that exist in the geriatric care space and more importantly, the kind of products and services that will be required to ensure that as we age, we also age with dignity and joy. Uh, Tara, Swamijit and Neil, we wish the three of you the very best of luck. Thanks so much for joining us here on Young Turks. We'll take a break. There's a lot more coming up on CNBC TV 18. Don't go anywhere. We're back in a minute. We small.